Thank you to Wix for sponsoring this video. Wix is a highly intuitive way to build a very professional website. Check out the link in the description if you want to try it out for yourself. Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm drawing fan art for stuff that I really love that the critics hated. You may remember a while back that I made kind of the inverse of this video where I drew stuff that was really popular that I really didn't like, so I wanted to bring to light some of the underrated gems that I really love. First up is Neo Yokio, a strange American-made anime starring Jaden Smith that got 54% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, they say it lacked an interesting plot or stimulating social commentary, which honestly I find completely confusing. <laughs> I thought that Neo Yokio was a really funny, really interesting show that made me extremely nostalgic for um, when I was first getting into anime. It sort of has a satirical, um, nostalgic, sort of loving parody uh, vibe to it for people who were watching anime uh, probably like 10 years ago um, and uh, basically the story is it's about this boy named Kaz Khan who lives in sort of aristocratic society in a city called Neo Yokio and basically he is part of the uh, like nouveau riche like or they call him Neo riche um, he's the new money uh, element of this very like um, materialistic capitalist society and he really loves like suits and the finer things in life but um, he only got this status because he's a magistocrat which basically means that um, his family earned money and power through their ability to banish demons um, and honestly this show is hilarious it's extremely weird um, it has a tone that I've really never seen before or since um, and Basically, <laughs> if you don't like the sense of humor, you're not going to like the show. Um, but to give you a sense of what it's really like, in the very first episode, Kaz is really depressed because his girlfriend has broken up with him. And um, he's talking to his uh, his <laughs> mecha butler about it. And um, at one point he says, um, uh, you know what, I can't deal with this. I want to go visit the grave. And of course you assume that he's visiting the grave of his parents or something and he has this sad tragic backstory, but actually it's just a grave that he designed for himself to lie in when he's feeling melancholy, <laughs> which is just like a really incredible um, character building moment uh, in my opinion. So I highly recommend giving Neo Yokio a chance um, and not listening to what the critics say uh, because I personally think it's really, really great. Um, the animation's not perfect, but even that that's kind of nostalgic, right? Um, so I did this very uh, sort of aesthetic-y um, drawing of a Bishonen version of Kaz, um, and I think I think he turned out pretty good. Next up is But I'm a Cheerleader, which is a cult classic LGBT movie um, that got a 39% from the critics. And honestly, I think that's a real shame because I think this is a really fantastic movie. Not just that I enjoyed it, but also that like some of the shots and the colors and stuff in this movie are really, really top notch. And it's incredible considering how old it is. Um, it's about this girl who is a cheerleader and she's very bubbly and very cute and very stereotypically feminine. Um, but despite that, her family thinks that she might be gay, so they cart her off to this scary conversion camp called True Directions, and um, RuPaul is there as a, uh, a straight counselor, and it's like this totally creepy, cultish like place where she's basically in prison with a bunch of other girls. Um, it's basically about this girl sort of discovering who she really is um, by being in this like very harrowing, um, bad sort of place, and she meets this girl named Graham, who's sort of like personality wise her exact opposite. She's really cynical and bitter um, and pragmatic, whereas like our main character is very idealistic and super cheerful and always believes that there's got to be um, some way that we can like make everything better. Um, she's basically just your, your standard chipper, cute cheerleader character. So um, this movie is really, really fantastic. It's not for kids um, by any means, it's R rated for a reason, but um, if you're old enough, I highly recommend giving this one a watch. It is really a crazy movie and I think that it's only going to um, keep maintain and probably improve its cult status as time goes on. Um, also, like I said, I mean just artistically the colors in this movie are crazy. They are so interesting and so cool um, and they change over the course of the narrative sort of unfolding in a way that I think is really really interesting and exciting for people who are interested in color. 
I don't often see movies that are able to balance like really over the top satire with like moments that are extremely sentimental and very sweet and very earnest and sincere. And I feel like this movie is one of the best examples of being able to do both of those things. I think a lot of the time people think that sincere films have to be sort of devoid of humor. Um, and I just think like this is a really great example that that doesn't necessarily have to be the case and that you can talk about really serious things um, with a smile on your face with a sense of humor so uh, those are the those are my last sort of thoughts about why I like this movie so much Next up is a movie called Mr. Right. Now, I don't even know how I found this movie, honestly. It must not have been marketed very well or very heavily, um, but it is one of the most insane genre benders that I've ever seen. It's basically 50% rom-com and 50% like espionage action movie. Um, it's about this girl who falls in love with um, a guy who, it turns out he's a, uh, well, he was an international hitman, one of the very best. Uh, people used to think of him like the Grim Reaper um, because he was so deadly. But by the time we meet him in the movie, he is reformed. He's decided he's only gonna kill people who try to hire him to kill someone else because murder is wrong. On top of that, we have our other main character, um, played by Anna Kendrick, and she's basically a girl whose life is completely becoming unhinged. Um, she just recently had to break up with her long-term boyfriend because he was blatantly cheating on her and he basically felt no remorse. And now this strange man has sort of appeared in her life that she really, really likes but something's a little off about him and she doesn't know exactly what it is. Um, one of the greatest parts about this movie is that he never lies to her. Um, and that's one of the things that really stood out to me about this. Um, it's always just a situation of like him saying like, hey, I gotta go out and kill that guy real quick. And she thinks he's joking. And it's like this very fun um, sort of movie where like a lot of the humor comes from the audience being able to see the whole picture and the characters not fully understanding each other. This is one of the movies that I'm the saddest that it got bad reviews just because the main complaint that people had was that it was tonally dissonant, which basically means that critics don't like genre bending movies because that's essentially what they're saying. They're saying it should have decided whether it wanted to be a sort of action-y movie or whether it wanted to be a rom-com. And personally, I don't really like rom-coms or action movies and I like this movie because it had this strange sense of balance and this pendulum swinging where the characters were existing in both of these sort of cinematic universes at the same time and both of the pieces of this were equally important to the movie. So it kind of bums me out that critics seem not to like that um, because I mean, I honestly think genre bending and genre mixing is one of the only ways we're going to keep getting fresh, interesting movies because there's only so many ways that you can present a straight up genre movie um, if you follow all the rules all the time. So. Those were my top three most like underrated movies and shows that I could think of. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make fan art for this stuff, even if maybe you hadn't heard of it before. Um, tell me in the comments what is your favorite thing that the critics didn't like or that got low reviews overall. I think it's good to occasionally have unpopular favorites. It just sort of shows you that you have your own mind, I guess, and that you can like things that aren't popular, um, which is good, I think. Uh, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you again to Wix for continuing to support the channel and sponsoring this video. If you're making your own website, you want it to be very professional and very you, and I think that Wix makes that extremely simple and intuitive. You can change basically everything about your website with only a click of a button or a drag of an asset. You can put in all your own images and assets or use the hundreds and hundreds of wonderful assets that come with Wix for free. It's also really simple to integrate uh, assets from a YouTube channel or something like that, which is really important to me, of course, and honestly to anyone who wants to try making social media their career. Um, it's really great to have a website that's going to play nice with other sites like that. Check the link in the description if you want to try making your own website, and thank you again to Wix.
Thank you so much to my patrons, including Bella Story, Braggy, Kalpumpum, Lion, Clockwork Construct, Dr. Casket, Alaria Louie, Elizabeth Album, Greer the Animator, Hachiyubi, Yara Formoso, Imagine Creation, Ivan Rodriguez, JJ Jade, Joseph Kopel, Katie Alina, The Blah Blah Blah, Mike Adactyl, Mr. Dr. Pants, Nalto Kamegire, Nora Cornelson, Ollie, Pixel Bad Lens, <laughs> Rosie Warlock, Rudy, Sergeant Pendulum, Some Mediocre Artist, The Artsy Moose, Tom David Johannesson, uh, Yaboyas T, and Zoe Stardust. <laughs>